The WNBA season tips off tomorrow night with Caitlin Clark set to make her professional debut. That happened fast. The league is coming off its most watched regular season in more than 20 years and just announced its teams will be getting charter flights for the entire 2024 season. Kathy Engelbert is the commissioner of the WNBA. She's also a 2024 CNBC changemaker. She's here with Surat Seti, who has been guest hosting for the hour. No Lehigh references, please. <laughs> Although I do note the tie. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Great tie. Um, so, Kathy, from your own career uh, there back then, so I, I just want to go back for everyone who's been amazed at the success of the WNBA and all the excitement around it. You just said something so interesting. 2020 was really kind of an existential year for you guys. Just kind of take us back to that time. Right. Think about it. Our season doesn't start till May, and the pandemic hits in March, essentially. You know, the NBA shuts down the sports world, and we don't have a season. We'd be out of the sports landscape for 20 months. And no media money, no corporate sponsorship money, you don't, and no ticket sales, anything. So you wonder how many teams would have survived that. We were already in survive would have even mode. Survived. And this was months after you became months after. Yes, yes, very quickly. So wow. I put all my uh, scenario planning hat on from my Deloitte days, and uh, we ended up having a season. The players trusted us, and we had a successful season, crowned a champion, and that put us on our path to today. One of the things that you seem to have done, as the NBA has done. Is to, is to bank on individual players. I mean, the NBA has noted stars. You know who LeBron is. You know who Jamal Murray is. And now you all have a similar sort of cadre of players, whether it's uh, Gabby Reese or whether it's uh, uh, Clark who's coming into the league or some of the established ones like Brianna Stewart or, uh, oh, I can't Asia remember. Asia Wilson. So, yes, yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, Lloyd, yeah. yeah. Um, Tyler, it is all about one thing I coming in from business is very quickly in sports, to get people to watch, you need rivalries, you need household names, you need games of consequence. That's yeah. why March Madness mm -hmm. is so popular, because every game is survive in advance. And that's why playoffs are so popular. Every, every game has a game of consequence. And then when you build these household names, I mean, for many years, people followed the WNBA, not a player or a team. And now we have this opportunity right. to build rivalries, so they're following teams and players, not just the league, because it's the right thing to do, because... We're a women's sports league, so and, it's changed. How are you looking now at expansion? Because now with the popularity growing, where are the next regions? How does that in your strategic plan? Because this has happened so fast, so quickly. Right. So in a country of 330 million people, the, we're the longest tenured women's professional sports league in the country mm -hmm. by double any other, tipping off our 28th season tomorrow. Um, you have to be in more than 12 cities. Um, because our corporate partners are in more than 12 cities. Our media partners want coverage in more than 12 cities. So we've announced we're expanding up to 16. We've already announced a Bay Area team in San Francisco, which is hugely accretive to the league. And then we'll be announcing some others shortly here. East Coast maybe to help with those game start times. I know a lot of them are a little, little, little late uh, in the day for those who live on the East Coast. Yeah, no, we'll, we're, we're looking at East Coast, middle of the country. We have a, a big gap in the mountain time zone where we have no team. So we're looking at everything. The nice thing is coming off our most watched draft in history with over 3 million at peak. We got a lot of calls just in the last few weeks. Yeah, the from, draft was good. Yeah. The I watched the draft. It was good. It yeah. was fun. And there were some good fashions there. It was really, <laughs> it was really nice. I saw you last night in an interview on a sister network of NBC, and you had a very interesting answer to the question of the comparative salaries between uh, women's uh, WNBA and the men's NBA. And your salary is capped at, what, $75,000? Well, that's where it begins, a rookie salary. A rookie salary Just is 75000 the base, base pay, we can, uh, apply, the, the max pays up to two. And, of course, comparative salaries between in golf or tennis or whatever, soccer, have been controversial. Repeat that answer of why you seem to have a much more nuanced view of that than some others do. Well, I like to look at total comp uh, like we do in proxy season, right, with, you know, you have the base pay of a CEO and then you have their bonus and their stock compensation and their other and other in our world is endorsements. I mean, our players are getting more and more endorsements, um, but we need to work on the pay thing. But we've only been around 28 years, 50 year head start in the men's basketball league. Hun uh, you know, uh, 75 years in the NFL and the NHL and MLB, they're all well over 100 years old. So we're making progress, but it's also being funded by the ecosystem called media. Yes, right? it's and bigger TV contracts, which you're going to catch Absolutely. up on. Yes, I, we're I mean... catching up on quickly here, and that'll be hopefully historic. And we just have this opportunity now with the viewership that we got off the NCAA Women's Tournament to really have a great season this year leading into our media negotiations.